And welcome to Saint Marie du Mont. My name is Box of Demons, and in this video, we're going to be having a look at Hell Let Loose's recreation of this map. We're going to be looking at some real World War II footage, which I won't be commenting over the top of, and we'll also have a little look around the map and learn a little bit of history along the way. This map is definitely my favourite out of the two. It's just a pleasure to be able to walk around this location and look at the amazing art and visuals in this game. So, without further ado, while we have our boots on the ground, let's go and have a little look around. And I'd just like to thank the regulator for giving me this footage and the opportunity to use this. So I thank you, sir. Very much respected. Welcome to St. Marie du Mont. St. Marie Dumont is best known for being the scene of a military engagement between the American 101st Airborne Division and the German Wehrmacht on D-Day, June 6, 1944. In the spring of 1944, the village of St. Marie Dumont was occupied by some 60 personnel belonging to the Artillery Regiment 91 section. It's less than one kilometre east of the coded sea drop zone which is shared by the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment and the 3rd Battalion of the 101st Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. One kilometre west of St. Marie de Mont is the Holdy Battery, occupied by the 2nd Albertung of the Artillery Regiment 191 and armed with four howitzers of 10.5cm diameter. On the night of June 5th and 6th, 1944, the parachutage did not proceed as planned for the 101st Airborne. Many airborne soldiers were not dropped to the right places. On several occasions, US parachutists are dropped over or near the village, mostly belonging to the 506. Some are taken to task while they're still in the air and are fighting directly after their landing. Isolated groups cross the alleys in the dim light. One of the paras covers the recess behind the fountain, equipped with a water pump, and from this position he opened fire and killed several Germans. First Class Soldier Ambrose Alley of the Staff Company of the 3rd Battalion of the 101st landed on the roof of a house and dropped by unhooking his harness. He was then taken prisoner by the Germans, who plastered him against the wall to shoot him, but two American paratroopers, not far from his location, then opened fire making the two gunners flee and saving the life of their comrade. I'm lying down at full length there in the cornfield, just in the hedges around me. I can see many men taking shelter behind the bank wearing their steel helmets while the terrific barrage goes on around us. In this barrage, we've got our 4.2-inch mortars, our field guns, our medium guns, all the guns of the fleet. The shells are whistling overhead now. Just listen to them. Smoke and dust rising from the cornfield that it's impossible to see. Our lower infantry are 
objective. A parachute stick is dropped over the Holdy battery. They are killed or taken prisoner when they are landed by the German Artillery Regiment 191 Artillerymen. Some of the paratroopers jumping near the place testify to the terrible tortures done on the prisoners. Cries are heard a good part of the night coming from the battery. At the dawn of the 506 Command Line Company, led by Captain Lloyd E. Patch, and the Charlie Company, commanded by Captain Nutt H. Rudstein of the 101st Battalion of the 506, reinforced by a dozen paratroopers of the 502nd, take by storm the position defended by some 50 Germans. A bazooka shot blew up a stockpile of ammunition, killing and injuring several artillerymen. The paratroopers seized the four howitzers after a quick but violent battle and discovered the lifeless bodies of several American soldiers mutilated with bayonets. Some were emasculated and burned with their own thermal grenades. The position is under control, but isolated shots are heard and force the Americans to remain under cover. Captain Patch entrusts the guard of the site to the elements of the 502nd and then goes to St. Marie du Mont. In the meantime, 1st Sergeant David Buck Rogers and Sergeant Major Isaac Cole of the 1st Battalion 506 are investigating the church and its bell tower, a great view of the area from which they can apply fire arcs with a small group of paratroopers. Later in the morning, shells were fired at the bell tower and one of them touched the building without causing any injuries. The origin of the firing was uncertain, but they were probably fired on by one of the guns of the battery of the Holdy under the orders of the American Sergeant William King, who thought that the steeple was still in the hands of the Germans. Colonel Sink, the 506 PR Corps commander, sent three jeeps to retrieve the Holdy's battery but the 502nd element in charge of securing the site under Captain Roadstan destroyed three of the four howitzers before vehicles, fearing they would fall into the hands of their opponents in the event of a counter-attack. Just before midday, Rogers and Cole spotted a German tracker heading for the church square from the bell tower. As soon as the Germans were within range, they opened fire. The passenger jumped out of the vehicle to try and find cover, but was hit and killed instantly. The driver attempted to reverse the vehicle, but was also killed. Early in the afternoon, landed troops from the 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the 8th Infantry Regiment, coming from Utah Beach, pulled out of the shore and into the inland, respectively by the roads named Exit 1 and Exit 2 by the Americans. They take part in the capture of St. Marie du Mont, notably with the support of the Sherman tanks of the 70th Tank Division Battalion which is entirely under control in the early afternoon. Two German soldiers who had hidden in the confessional of the vicar of the church are taken prisoner around 18 hours later by the American military police. There is such a rich history surrounding this location in the real world and the map and I think a lot of people will play these maps and not be interested 
in the history of it, but I also know that a lot of the community, including myself and some of my close friends, really do find this this kind of thing really interesting. It all comes down to, I think, a feeling of respect. And on D-Day in June, I hope you will give a minute silence or even lay a wreath or give respect to your local cenotaph. I know I will be at mine just to give that respect, not only for the Americans, but for all the nations that fought in the war, including the Germans as well. I know the Germans are always labelled as Nazis. I don't think that's right. A lot of the soldiers and the infantry, they fought for their country just as hard as the British and the Americans fought for their countries. They weren't aware of what was going on behind the scenes. Many of them didn't even know about the concentration camps. So I think they shouldn't be vilified every single time in video games and in culture and everything else. I think it is a real shame. Many, you know, good Germans died as well. They had friends and family and loved ones. They fought hard and they died. So I think all due respect to everybody who fought during World War II, I think that's when a man was a man and a real each country had its own identity and you could be proud of that identity without being crushed by the left but i don't want to get into that into this video respect to all the fallen thank you to all the community and the subscribers who supported not only hell let loose but my channel and giving me thumbs up and a little bit of support and some nice feedback on discord very much appreciated. I shall leave you with a little bit more footage from World War II, from St. Marie du Mont, original footage. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave your comments and that in the box below, but please be respectful to both sides. Otherwise, I shall see you on the battlefield, and I shall see you with shiny boots and a clean garand. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.